Hey guys, my name is Nick. Um, so today we're going to go ahead and assemble some uh, the concrete weight molds that I 3D print. So this is a 9 part 45 centimeter diameter 45 pound weight mold. So when we're done, these should weigh right at 45 pounds right in there. Um, centering tool. Um, this is used for your sleeve holder locator. So we can try and get that exactly centered so that the weights aren't all lopsided. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to screw these down to a piece of plywood. You can use something else, um, especially if you're familiar with weight molds. I don't know why you'd be watching this video if you are, because I'm an idiot. But, uh, so this right here um, is a piece of plywood. It's black because I have flex sealed it. Um, I have been flex sealing the concrete weights along with uh, rubberizing them. And uh, a customer told me that flex sealing the plywood is actually a really good idea. So I'm going to try that out right now. Um, before that, what I was doing um, was I was just uh, putting wax paper down in here. I'd screw the whole weight mold down, then put the wax paper down. I'd cut it in a complete circle inside the mold. And what that does is that keeps the concrete from attaching to the plywood or the water from getting the plywood and pulling up some wood. Um, and it's just not a not a great time for anybody um, So I'm gonna give this a shot. I guess you'll see at the end of the video how this turns out because I don't know right now uh, If you are 3d printing your own you have bought the files um, These have been made as simple as possible for the for someone to assemble um, Printing you're gonna have to uh, change your settings and stuff. So as you can see every time I switch filament You know I get kind of some different results on these um, I don't print with PLA anymore um, some of my earliest molds were PLA but as we're getting into summer um, the, the PLA is just gonna warp so they're printed in a uh, high impact plastic so you can you know bang them around a little bit with the hammer all right guys so uh, as you can see the molds all screwed down now um, and then centering tool I can just pull that out now I used it found the center um, so you can see how I've done it um, I just did the clamps we did clamp 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 it helped if you have a whole bunch you could just clamp the whole thing at one time but then screw it down um, but it's pretty rock solid now um, sometimes you're gonna get ones that just want to turn on the screw um, you can either try and tighten the screw down more just be careful of uh, you know running the screw in too deep and crushing the plastic outer ring there um, so I've turned my drill down actually so I didn't do that another option if you've got time to wait you can do some glue in between the joints there um, I wouldn't glue all the joints just the ones that are giving you problems um, so as you can see these ones are all free I did have two up there that were kind of giving me some issues so they've been glued the reason why is because you could just pull these up later and get the mold out right just pull a couple of pieces and get up underneath there um, but in theory you shouldn't have to um, but I'll show you that process here in just a moment all right guys so I'm getting ready to do my mold up um, got everything assembled so this is just two inch ABS pipe you mostly just want to make sure it's gonna go over 50 millimeters because that's what your Olympic size barbell is if you've got the other insert, it needs to go over whatever your standard bar is, probably 26 millimeters usually. Um, some of them are 30. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, uh, while I'm thinking about it, you need to make sure these things are square. Um, so this side's not quite square, but this is. That's the part you want laying against the base, because if not, it's going to be crooked, and it's still going to go on your barbell crooked. Um, next step, I'm going to spray this mold down with some lubricant spray. Um, all of it so that the cement will release. Um, then I'm going to mix in the concrete right here. These are glass fibers. They're just fiberglass fibers. Um, they're going to go in the concrete. They're what really make the concrete weights last. Um, and then I was reading a research paper from MIT uh, about 3D printing increasing the structural integrity of concrete. So this is just uh, pretty much it's the same as metal mesh if you wanted to use metal mesh or something. Um, I'm going to put a baseline of concrete in here, 
put these in about halfway all the way around then fill it with concrete and finish it off and I'll show you from there all right guys um, as you can see I've got oh I don't know probably about a third of the mold full um, I'm just putting these in here so I, I have those fibers mixed into this concrete and that's usually well enough but I wanted to try this after reading that paper um, if you don't want to order the fiberglass um, strands, um, I have had people use raw cotton, um, and that seems to work okay. So I'm just pushing these down in here, but you could use wire mesh or rebar or something, whatever you want. The goal is, is to keep the weight from cracking all the way through. Um, you should probably have a little more watery of concrete than I do. This next batch I'm going to mix up pretty watery, um, and then I'm going to put a little bit down and then put another piece of this reinforcement here, here, and here. Um, and we'll see how that goes, but those fiberglass strands, you don't need an awful lot of them in here. Um, it's always better to have more than less, but the main thing is, is that you need to mix it really well and distribute those strands real well. Because um, if it's all here and you don't have any strength here, well, you're just going to end up cracking there. So, but I'm going to go ahead and finish mixing this one up and then we'll go from there. Okay guys, um, what you see in there is the full mold. I did mix the top layer really wet, but you know, it is what it is. I needed to uh, make sure the concrete goes the way through. Um, I do live in Colorado, but I'm in a greenhouse right now and it's about 95, 98 degrees in here Fahrenheit. So um, I'm just gonna let this settle for uh, th probably two days before I pull it out of the mold. Um, and then I'm gonna let it cure for um, I don't remember what the bag said, but probably, uh, you know, a week. Just let it sit here on a rack outside of the mold. That's high strength concrete is what I used, or 5,000, depending on which company you're using. Um, and then I do tap the mold, or the plywood. Um, that's why you're usually seeing a lot of that water coming out. But what that's doing is it's releasing the bubbles from the concrete weight mold. So um, you definitely don't want a bunch of bubbles sitting in there it's gonna really weaken the edge of that concrete so but yep so i'll show you the finished product when i pull it out of the mold in a couple of days so guys as you can see um all i had to do is take a couple pieces of the mold off on the outside um then i whacked the back of the mold to release it and it actually came off really nice and that's pretty smooth but you could see i didn't I need to figure out a way I can vibrate the, the mold so I could get some more air bubbles out of it. I mean, that came out looking pretty good. Um, this is two days later that I let it set. Yeah, right around two days. Uh, it actually came out pretty nice. So considering I'm not a concrete expert. Um, but now I'm going to let it sit and cure for, I don't know, five, six days depending on the weather. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, I might just try and flex seal the weights and see how that holds up. Now, the reason I rubber coat and flex seal the weights is I don't think it adds any protection, but it stops the concrete dust. Um, and that's a big deal for me. Uh, some of my weights are inside, but most of them are out here in the yard. So, yeah, I'm going to set this out of the way and let her dry. Okay, guys, so... It's been probably about four to five days uh, since that video. Um, but you see, there's the weight of the mold. Yeah, can's not leaning against or anything. So you're usually probably about half a pound um, if you fill it to the top. So now what I'm going to do, uh, we've got a major cold snap and storm rolling into Colorado right now. So um, I'm going to try Flex Seal right now. I've been using Plasti Dip. Uh, for these weights You don't have to do this step if you're just gonna have it outside and you don't care um, but this one's gonna end up inside In my uh, garage gym, so I've heard people use flex seal a couple of different customers um, So I'm gonna give it a shot Now they have uh, for the plastic dip if you use the plastic dip um, Lay it on thick multiple coats, you know really thick stuff because it lays on kind of thin um, and it is as you you know throw the weight around and stuff it kind of just chucks off if it's pretty thin like I'm talking 
one 45 pound plate should have one can of Plasti Dip probably. Um, I went a little too thin and uh, it, it's definitely fallen off. So I'm pretty excited to try this. So I know this stuff holds really tight or it just doesn't hold at all. Um, it's either one or the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and dust this off. Shake this real good, move the plant out from underneath this because I'm in my greenhouse um, and give her some spray. So we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. Well, I don't know. I'll probably show you after I'm done spraying. I'm not going to flip the weight over though. That's this weight flex sealed on this side anyways. I tried to get around the back, but uh, when I flip the weight over, I'll rotate it. Uh, so I probably put two or three, uh, actually probably three or four pretty wet coats on this. Uh, this stuff takes an hour to kind of set up before you should apply more coats. Um, I'm probably not going to do that. I'm just going to let it sit overnight. Then I'll come back out tomorrow. Um, probably run another couple of coats, let it sit half a day, and then flip it over. Um, so the main reason I do this is just keep the concrete dust down. Um, also, kind of helps them distribute some of the uh, impact when you drop them. I haven't had too many problems with dropping them, though, but... Uh, I was just I was really hoping this was more of like an OD green instead of just a green but uh yep yeah, we'll see how she looks uh tomorrow um flipping over and stuff like that and then grab another one and hose it too so catch you guys next time